Thank you and good morning. This is Community Manifesto live on TV3 New Day. This is a segment of the show where we get out of the studios and go into communities to speak to people on the ground about the issues that are affecting them in the community, issues affecting the youth, women, the general community, and so on. We ask questions about the considerations that they will make. What, or what are the things that are important to them going into elections 2024? What are the expectations they have of their leaders? And during Community Manifesto, everybody can come and use their voice to speak truth to power live on television. We've been around the country and we're still in northern Ghana. Today we're coming to you from the Laura constituency in the Upper West region of Ghana. This constituency used to be part of the Laura Nandom constituency until it was split um, sometime in 2012. It has a growing voter population of over 33,000. Yep, 33,000. And this year, they're all poised and ready to go to the polls like all of us in the rest of the country. This morning, we're joined at the community center, we are at the lorry station here at Laura, and we're pleased to be joined by the Honorable Member of Parliament um, for this constituency, the Honorable Lawyer Bid Angwataz, <laughs> I beg your pardon, Angwatazma um, Zidding. Did I, did I pronounce that right? All right, awesome. I, it, it took a lot of practicing. <laughs> as well as other um, leaders in the community. So I will quickly let them introduce themselves. And then, as we always do, we activate the microphones and let the people in the community speak. Because it is because of the people in the community that we are here. So we give them the first opportunity to speak to their leaders. And then, if the leaders would like to answer to any of the issues that are raised, they are allowed to do so. So, um, Honorable. I've already introduced you, but I'd like you to do so again. Um, can, can you please pass the microphone on to Honorable, please? Thank you very much, Naya. Uh, and let me also use the opportunity to welcome you to the Laura constituency and then to Laura Town. Thank you, sir. This is a very beautiful place. It's a very pe peaceful place, and I'm sure that you enjoy your stay here. Uh, my name is Bede Anwatazmo Ziedem. Indeed. You are not the first person to face challenges in pronouncing my name. <laughs> Indeed, when I was being called to the Ghana bar, okay. uh, the secretary, uh, to the, the judicial secretary, who was to call out our names, when he got to my name, he could never call it. In which year was this? Uh, that was 1986. 1986. That is right. That was two clear years before I was born. Well, that is okay. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, but you have come to meet me anyway. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I have. You have come to meet me. Wow. Uh, and that's why, this, that's why in this constituency I'm called the man. The man? Yeah, that's why. Right. That is your yes. nickname. That, that's my nickname. The man. The man. Yes. Is there the woman? Uh, well, we are yet to get a woman. Only the man. So, so far, we have the man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. Thank yes, you for yes. welcoming us. We're right, happy to you. be here. Thank you. All right, can, can we meet you also, sir? What, what's your name? Um, Joseph Bati. Okay, and the tell us who you are. Laura Constituency NDC Chairman. NDC Chairman. Yes, please. All right, thank you so much, sir. And we have some of our community leaders here also, sir. What's your name? And can you tell us who, who let, yes. My name is Baba Musa. Okay. Baba Musa from Tampier. From Tampier. Mm, I'm a, a, a station manager for oh. taxi, Laura Taxi Station. Of the taxi station. Yes. Okay, uh, station manager. Yes. Okay, sir. Uh, All right, nice to meet you. Uh, and then, yes, sir. Now, you are welcome. My Thank regards, you so much, sir. My regards to Roland, Cookie, and everyone there in TV3. Thank you, sir. For today, they will see Stephen Peng live. Ah, I'm Mr. An, Stephen Peng. I'm an elder <laughs> and an opinion leader in Laura. In this constituency. But I come nice from, to meet you, I come sir. from Zambo. I see. Mr. Stephen Peng has been a very ardent viewer of TV3 New Day. And every day on the show, he sends his contributions in. And even though sometimes we are not able to read them, we try our best. So today that we are here, we apologize to you for all the messages we couldn't read. But we, we really appreciate your contribution Thank to you. the show. Thank you. Thank you. So um, like we always do, we encourage you. Ago. Ago. All right, I'm glad you're all behind me, but the microphone is in front of me. So um, please come over to this side. Um, the microphone is open and activated now. If you have anything to say, um, an ap uh, appreciation to give, a complaint to give, an issue to, to, to talk about, now is the time. The microphones are open here and here. Um, so you may come to the microphone and talk 
to us. But while we wait for you to come, are you, are you coming? All right, sir. So um, you, you, may, you may just form a line behind him. We'll take five comments each. So five from here. And then we'll also take five from here. And then um, our leaders will, will respond. Yes, sir, please mention your name and the microphone is open. Um, I'm Honorable Zola Dabu Anosama of the NDC and also an assembly member for the Babel Electoral Area. I have a few challenges that I expect to be addressed by the elderly children of our mother's rival, the MPP. Our mother is the NDC, our mother's rival's children, the NPP. That is what I expected them to, uh, I, I, whom I expect to answer these questions. Alex, the people of this constituency have suffered frustration have experienced failure and are now to the point, the point that they are confused. We are confused because of stalled development projects in the community. We have we were promised a senior high school for girls in Dongmeni. Nothing has been done to that effect. A, uh, sorry, Zambo. Nothing has been done to that effect. A multi purpose assembly hall for Laura Senior High. It is there. Nothing has been done. The TVED Institute at Tolibri is at foundation level. The contractor has disappeared from site for up to two years now. Nothing has been done. Emergency ward project in our municipal hospital. An emergency ward. Let's do the title of the an emergency ward. So emergency issues are being toyed with. So an emergency ward in Laura Municipal Hospital is just at foundation and nothing has been done on it. A hospital ward, 30 unit hospital ward in Babili Polyclinic is there. No work is being done on it. So what is happening? What is happening that states uh, resource projects, state initiated projects cannot be carried out. Yes, where is the money that was intended to be used in carrying out these projects? It creates an impression in us that the, uh, the MPP are very cunning and in fact very craftful when it comes to deceitful plotting. Yes. They, they are excellent at sword cutting. They are not excellent, they are not any good at commissioning completed projects. Where are their work projects? All what right. is the state of our projects? Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, sir, please tell us your name. Uh, my name is Steven Gandano, a uh, member of this constituency. Yes, sir. Uh, I thought the honorable member would have mentioned one of our biggest projects and deceit, which is the uh, deeper bridge, which was promised years back. And I wish the MPP representatives would have been here, the MC, which I wanted to throw this question to, how far with our project? A sword was cut, we haven't seen any pro progress in that project. Also, I want to ask a question on our one million uh, per constituency, one million, one dollar per constituency, and our one district, one factory. Now we have over, uh, I can say over, Hundred, almost hundred uh, villages in this under this constituency. We can only boast of two, two one dam, one village projects, which are not even good enough to hold water for irrigation farming. And also, I want to make uh, an appeal, which is on our Laura Hen Road, which our honourable, our good honourable member of Parliament, has always been trying his best to work on, even as uh, regional minister for a short period, which the contract was terminated. As a member of parliament, he has initiated another, another way forward in getting that project completed. But we know he's an orphan in, in, in the house. So it is very difficult to get that project completed. And we wish the, 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 this and the MC and his people will be here so that we'll throw such questions to them. Thank you very much. 
All right, thank you. Well, we, we did extend an invitation to all who are concerned to be here so that they could answer some of these questions. They are not here right now. Let's hope that maybe they are on their way. Maybe they are not here yet. But we are recording these questions, and of course, they'll be live on television as well. And so um, they should be able to provide answers in due course. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Paulo Damasus, a member of the Queen Fiancé. Um, before I say anything, I appreciate what TV3 has been doing and also coming to our doorsteps. But uh, for the future, when we go by our time, let's go by it so that, because our fathers were here, uh, the six o'clock AM that was given. So now that we started the program, all the same, that is, that is all for our own good. We apologize, we are very sorry. Um, looking at Laura, Laura has been one of the oldest going to NC in Ghana, Northern Ghana and Upper West at large. Looking at the few uh, developmental projects that we had the last eight years, that is uh, from 2008 to uh, 2016. Um, and also what we are receiving now is so something that with the youth of the Korean Twensi, there is vast difference. Looking at employment, it's something that the youth people have completed and we are still here. No job for us. And we have, we have people who have gone to parliament to come to support us. But looking at it, when we count the youth at our back here, those who have completed with even degree, but we are still jobless. That is my uh, concern. And also looking at it, uh, we, are, we are suffering from our road. I believe, frankly, when you were coming, you enjoyed the Thai road, the, the Thai road we had. You enjoyed the Adfat, moving from uh, Accra to even down to Laura. You enjoyed that. It has been a problem. But uh, we are urging that, for me, I'm urging that our leaders in parliament, our leaders who want us to vote for them, they should do something. So at least, if we even vote for them come December 7, 2024, they should let us know that after gaining power, they will come back and make sure that the All youth right. are well served. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. So I think um, you are the fourth person to speak. You're the, you're the fifth person to speak, yes. Yeah. So after you, we'll take five comments from here as well. Thank yes, you sir. very much. I'm Stephen Babley, a concerned member. Of there are lots of Stevens in this constituency. Yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, this question goes to our Honorable, uh, Honorable Bitz Yedin. He has been a member of parliament for the past four years now. I want him to account to us some of the activities in terms of employment that he has done for the youth. He should tell us what he intends to do going forward into this 2022, I mean 2024 election that is coming on because he's poised. He says he's going to win this election, but I think it will be another different show altogether if things don't go on very well. But I want, us to, I want him to tell us a lot about what he's coming to do, an account of whatever he wants to come and do for us so that the people will going to know what he intends to do so that we can see what we can do to select the best out of what we can vote since. All right. Thank I you so it. much. Now we'll come to this side also and take five comments. Yes, sir. My name. The my gentleman name is... clapping under the shadow by the you should also join us here and also come to the microphone so we can clap for you, okay? <laughs> All right, yes. Yeah. My name is Musa Abderazad, Laura Constituency, a member. Um, I think it's unfortunate the MC, who is the development agent in Laura, is actually not here because my question is actually directed to him and then some other few MPP or government in power members. I think we elect leaders to come and solve our problems for us. Now, at least they should have told us or tell us at least which of our major problems he has been able to solve for the past four years. At least you enjoy the route, like my other brother said. You see how asphalted it is. The GPL2 man, who is my elder brother, they mobilized to fill, to fill the potholes you saw there. The, 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 the potholes you saw they filled there was being done by... I hear he's your father. <laughs> he's my elder brother. He's your elder brother. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's my elder brother. I see. And, and again, and again, and again, Laura has four major, four major uh, zones, old zones. They promise a lot. They done nothing. Now, my question now is directed to my MP. My MP. He has done a lot, though. 
he has always been appreciated by the constituents. Now, I want to find out from him what exactly he is coming to do for we, the youths, who are teaming up to support him in his second bit. Thank you. All right, thank you. My yes, name sir. is Derek Hasim Osman. I want to speak on the sanitation issues concerning Laura, i.e. toilet facilities. I think I live within the Zongo electoral area. Prior to the 2020 elections, the former MP who was Anthony Carvo promised us of several toilet facilities that is going to build across the length and breadth of the constituency. Fortunately for us, the Zongo electoral area benefited one and it was completed before the elections. And I can tell you now, up till today, that toilet facility is still sitting there. We have the lorry station here. Just a meters away is the toilet. Passengers who come here find it difficult to ease themselves. So I would want to find out from the Honorable MP what he can do to see to the uh, commissioning of that and subsequent usage of that uh, toilet. Also, we have our ambulance, which has been grounded for over three months now. It has been a major, of, uh, a major issue of concern to the people of Laura. Should anyone fall sick and need an emergency transportation now, we have to either rely on Jirapa or Nandom. In the case where there are ambulances are on the road, which means you can, you can, you, your, your, your guess is as good as mine. Uh -huh. Also, just as with our major concern here is the youth. Behind me are my colleagues. So, honorable, you know what we, we are, we've been doing for you. So, we want, to, we want you to assure us what you have in mind. Should you win the 2024 elections? And we know, inshallah, you are going to win. And we, we are praying that you win and come to our aid. Thank you. All right, sir. I'm Clovis Same, a constituent. Uh, I stand here to speak as a taxi driver. I'm a taxi driver. Uh, I'm more concerned of the road. I, I heard about two people talked of the road. Yes, the road is so bad to be used to an extent that uh, we, the taxi drivers, are suffering in this constituency. You load four people from Laura to Wa. How much fuel do you buy? And you can't even buy spare parts. When Baumia was to visit the constituency, we saw people patching up the route. After his visit, we don't know where they passed. When you go to the fuel pump, the prices of the fuel increases at a high rate and reduces at a lower rate. So we are suffering. You run this road for one week and you can't even buy a tie for your car. What is happening to us? This is my question to those that are concerned. They should address our roads issues. They should address the fuel issues. And let us also enjoy Ghana as we all are Ghanaians. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm Honorable Madi Bayou. Please come closer. Closer my to the microphone. On, my issue is on rural electrification. In fact, in 2016, NDC started with the program, and after MPP won, it has been abandoned. There are many communities within the Laura community suffering from electricity issues. Meanwhile, we have been told that some people can do it, doing it with their mouth, and nothing is done at the community level. The second issue is that we are talking about planting for food and job. Our farmers do not get fertilizer, but they wait for the election period. Around December, and you are now selling fertilizers. Do our farmers farm around December? So we want to find out whether the fertilizer is meant for politics or is actually meant to serve our people. Our concern is that if it is genuine to solve the problem of farmers, then it should be done somewhere April and May, but not this period. This period is partisan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. 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 Peter. My name is Peter. Peter Sorenya. I am from Babli, Kumasal, and I grew up in Laura here. I actually stay in Tema. 
My house is around 25, but then my office is in uh, Community 6. I'm a design and build contractor and a project management professional. Because I grew up in Laura here and I heard about the coming of TV3, I decided to join to share my um, experience and also concerns. Um, that being said, anybody here Dagara, but because it is, I wanted to speak Dagara, but because it is more of a national platform. It's okay, you can go I ahead. have decided that I would speak in English. And maybe later on in our communication, um, we can always translate it. Because of my background in project management, I've decided to be pragmatic with the issues. We have this constituency, a very old constituency, a very old district, a very old, I mean, recently we got municipality. But when you look at Laura in general, when we talk of infrastructural development, infrastructural development, we are really lagging behind. And what are the reasons? When you look at um, the older days during Rollins time and during the NDC time, we had good plannings, and a lot of people can attest to me, I mean, that when you look at Zinkongno, even now you're the chief police area, planning was perfect. Now what happened along the way? Fast forward, and the MPP came to power, and it's always been a problem when it comes to infrastructural planning because of the capitalist nature of the MPP government. You don't want to look at the future. You want to rather look at how you can capitalize on decisions in order to get people to vote for you. That's rather unfortunate. And so let me list out some of the things. Poor planning. Um, this is an old presiding member from the NDC side. He would tell you that in the NDC days, we had a master plan for Laura. That master plan has become a cake, has grown old. I was expecting that subsequent governments come in should develop or update that master plan. What's a master plan? It tells us where our major facilities should be in. But we don't do that now. We rather look around and say, where are people talking so much that if we take it there, they will not vote for us. Then they will not take it there. And a clear example is just here. People's businesses were here. They have demolished most of our people's businesses. And they have come to put up this. What's brought the station. What's the station, okay. Yes, brought the station here. The initial plan, if you ask the old um, presiding member, they had a plan that a Laura station was going to be positioned somewhere outskirts of Laura. That would have brought what? Development, right? You would have had people moving taxis, uh, what do you call it, abuboya or tricycles, and food sellers spreading outside of the town, thereby making the town a bit free for navigation. Laura is sitting on a time bomb. Within the next five to ten years, when we, most of us start having vehicles and we have a lot of cars passing by, and I hear that the Honorable MP and the NDC government are making it a priority to look at the Dequeb Bridge. I don't know, but I hear so. If we should have that Dequeb Bridge, Laura becomes an international route. Even though it is currently an international route because it moves towards Hamile. Take a critical look at this station. Cars are coming out. What happens on this road? There will be traffic jam from there and from there. That's just an example. When you look at most of the structures that are coming up in our Yes, I'm wrapping up in, in our constituency. I don't know, but it looks like there is political interferences that is causing indiscriminate buildings sprinkling around anywhere or everywhere. Okay, so to just conclude, for me, it is clear. It is clear. I'm speaking as a concerned citizen, and it is clear that having an MC who could have looked at some of these things and planned it properly, may not or will not be able to handle the parliamentary office properly. And for me, I still support that Bizier then should proceed. 
All right. Yes. Thank you. The last one. Let's, let's have that master plan for Laura. And I'm suggesting to the NDC and then BZ, then who is definitely going to win again, that let's have that master plan for Laura. And from there, we should be able to see other investors, people coming in with estates and all that. Just to conclude with a short story that I heard from my teachers. All right, that's, that's your time. Okay. That's so your that's time. Fine. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. We appreciate you. Um, one more person. Yes, sir. Okay. My name is Sanome Derek. Um, I'm a constituent to, of uh, Laura constituency. My issue has to do with rising cost of health in the Laura constituency. My colleagues are here. My brothers and sisters are here. My mothers are here. When they go to the health centers, they go to the clinics, the hospitals, they will attest to the fact that there are always enormous bills that are associated with simple, simple ailments that they go to report. Recently, we heard that most, we saw that many of our consulting rooms were getting empty. People were not coming. We thought maybe is that people are well. But the preventive staff, we have the preventive staff working with the health service. When they went into the communities and went into people's rooms, they actually found sick people lying in the rooms. Why will they not go to the hospital? The cost is too high. They can't take care of the cost. So people even who suffer prefer that I'll just probably go to a roadside, self-medicate, or probably go back to the bush and cut some leaves and come and boil. This is uh, the, real, the reality when it comes to the health crisis that people in Laura constituency are going through. And may I ask if you use national health insurance? The national health insurance, madam, I don't know whether that card, it actually works. Why? Because Why the national health insurance is just something you carry in your pocket. It's you just wear your pocket for nothing. It's not accepted the at only the thing They will accept it, but there will still be bills that always come with these things. And then the people can't afford these things. The people are suffering. Okay. Associated with that, closely associated with that is that just recently, by virtue of my own work that I do on the side, we came across people who are still uh, suffering from preventable diseases like schistosomiasis. It means that some people still drank water that was infected by the disease. And you wonder that in the 21st century, 2024, this disease still uh, is being registered in this constituency. So I would like Honorable MP to give us some assurance about what his plans are for when it comes to water, provision of water, and improving the, what we have currently. Already, I'm aware of some of the things he has done in, 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 in terms of health to promote things for us here. But well, since he himself is here, I don't want to uh, say them. Maybe he will say them. It's but with what I've seen so okay. far, I'm very, very confident in his leadership. All and right. I trust that if young people are listening here, they should give us the support, give him the necessary support, so that he goes on to continue with the good things he's bringing to this constituency. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right, so we'll come to our leaders now. I think you should begin with the questions. I'm honorable. You should begin with the, qu the questions which were directed at you regarding your plans for the youth and employment, and then the gentleman who just spoke about um, town and country planning um, thinks that there should be an upgrade of the master plan, which was initially put together by the NDC. Can you, can you pass the microphone on to Honorable? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. A lot to talk about. And I appreciate the concerns which have been raised. And uh, I must say that uh, I, I, would have, I, I would have loved to have my other contestants around so that uh, we can share the burden of explaining to them what we intend to do. Because I've got two other contestants, the Municipal Chief Executive Jacob Derry, who is running on the ticket of the MPP, and then Mr. Joseph Dabuo, who is running as an independent candidate. Why they have not come, only God knows. It is not the first time that I've, I've gone through this experience. Indeed, in 2020, there was a similar forum, not organized by TV3, but by another group. And they invited us to that particular forum. Again, I was the only person uh, who came around. Honorable Anthony Cabo was a sitting MP then, but uh, he didn't show up. So today, again, I'm here alone, but I'll do the best that I can. Now, let me pick the, the questions one after the other. First, about 
youth employment. Let me make it clear that when I decided that I was going to contest for the position of member of parliament, I gave out a vision. And in my vision statement, I made it very clear that I have th four thematic areas. One, education was one thematic area. Two, agri mechanization was the second thematic area. Third, youth employment or youth empowerment. And then fourth, women empowerment. And so, unfortunately, in 2016, I didn't win the election. 2020, I won the election. And since then, I've been implementing this vision. I've been putting it into practice. Before I came into office, that is when the NDC was in, in, in government, NDC provided certain facilities which supported the youth. NDC brought about less debt, and less debt brought about skills development. They supported the youth in the area of uh, 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 tailoring, in the area of barbering, in the area of uh, uh, dressmaking, uh, 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 and, and many other areas. In fact, they brought about little, little machines, including uh, 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 tricycles and other things to support the youth. In this constituency? Yes, in this constituency. C can you give us numbers? How well, many young people benefited from this? Well, I will not be able to give you any specific numbers, but I can tell you that the people who benefited from that facility, they are available. Okay. I can bring some of them. The young man standing there, he benefited. Come, I got him. He's a beneficiary. You, you, you can come to the microphone yeah. and speak. Yeah, he was given a tricycle. Is that so? Yeah, yes. Okay, so, so what where, do you where, do now? Where, where's in Nureni? Yes, there's, a one, there's one at the back there. Okay, so these tricycles and machines were given to young people to work. Yes. But I'm, I'm asking this question because three young people have come to talk about youth unemployment in the constituency. Yes, I'm so, coming to that. Yeah, so my question is, how, many, how, how much ground were you able to cover? What was the impact? I, I'm coming to that. Okay. Of course, NDC went out of government. Okay. And when the MBP came, you know what happened? What happened? Yes. They went and sold out their things to their own people. They did not follow the processes of giving out to people, not just their people. They went and sold out everything, and they didn't even account for it. That's what they did. And you heard about the MPP youth in Tamale going to the Savannah, uh, what do you call it? Northern, what do you call it? Savannah, no, Savannah, it was Savannah Development something. Sada, it was Sada. They went there and they vandalized the place and they carried away the things. They didn't even pay for that's they vandalized they yes. the machines and tricycles. No, the offices. And the they offices. took away the and machines. Away the machines. They didn't even pay for them. That's what happened. When was this? Well, now, I thought that you are a media person, and you should have captured this thing properly. Uh, yes, I am. But you're, this is, but this you, is, but this is public knowledge. Yeah. I, don't have to, I, I, I don't have to give you. I'm asking, it is public knowledge. I'm asking you specifically to this constituency. So... This is what we do when we come on community manifesto that engagements. That's correct. We like to focus on issues precisely. in the constituency. Precisely, precisely. So because the people in your constituency precisely. are talking precisely. about unemployment, yes, yes. I want you to speak to their issue. I'm speaking exactly to that. Okay. But I'm giving you the conditions under which they operated under the NDC. I'm saying that when the MVP came into office, they curtailed all those initiatives. They curtailed them, and so those initiatives are no longer available. For eight years, they are not available. I'm coming to that. Before I can tell you what we are now going to do. Okay. Okay? Yes. So I must, I must deal with the past before mm. I come to the present, and then we can move into the future. Okay. Right. So, yes, all those things, uh, 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 when the MEP government came into office, they can tell all those things. And I'm saying that in, our, in the new government of the NDC, President John Draman Mahama has indicated ahead of taking office that he is going to bring about apprenticeship program and apprenticeship and then skills training. And under that program, the youth will benefit from that particular program. Youth hairdressers will be trained under their master craftsmen, and then they will be given stipends, and the master craft craftsmen will be paid for training them. T uh, tailors, mechanics, uh, 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 what do you call them? Welding and fabrication, uh, uh, painting, all those people. They are going to benefit from this particular training. And beyond that, beyond that, the youth are also going to be empowered in various ways 
in terms of giving them support uh, to engage in their own private businesses. All these things are going to be done under a new administration of John Rahman Mahama. But let me deal with my side. Exactly. The, that's that's what we with, want you to yes, do. Because I'm going to operate under a government. And so it is important for the youth to know that I'm not coming as a, an individual. Them, as an individual to come and do these things. I'm doing these things because my, my, my president will be in government and that he will support me to do the other things for him, for, for them. Now, as I indicated to you, I said that youth empowerment is my concern. How have I, how have I empowered the youth? You will, I will give you my, my set of achievements. First, through education. Through education. Through education, what am I doing? I've decided that I will support students who have qualified to attend tertiary, tertiary institutions. And for this particular area, so far, I've supported four, a minimum of 400 students. And for each one of them, I've supported the, 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 the student with a minimum of 1,000 Ghana cities. It's between 1,000 and 3,000 Ghana cities. And I've supported over 400. Now, is that towards school fees or? Yes, I'm, I'm supporting them to pay their school fees. Of 400 students? Yes, 400 students. By yourself? Yes, through my common fund. That's 400,000 cities. And beyond. And more. Yes, and more. Over, and over which period? Uh, let me show you. Uh, that I'm here with the evidence. Oh. <laughs> No, it's even on the screen, um, honorable, even on the screen, I think we've, di we've displayed, no, it's on, no, look at it. On, on, okay, maybe you can't see from where you're, okay, nope. from where you're sitting. I'm talking about this list. What, I'm not talking about the achievements. Okay. This is the list. This uh, is the number of students yes, you have supported. Yes, their names and the amounts that they have received. I see. This is the evidence. Okay. And it is zone by zone. You have seen mm. Jibwe zone. You have seen Laura Main zone. Okay. You have seen... To a zone. Okay. You have seen Kansari zone. Okay. Baruda zone. All in this constituency. All in this constituency. Okay. To Libri zone. Okay. You have Tanchera zone. Okay. You have got Babili zone. All right. You have got Brifo zone. Zambo main. You have got Ermo main zone. You have got Ermo east. Okay. You have got Barry Zone. Okay. All are here. Okay. So you can take this. So I'm not just making a claim. You're not just talking. I'm not just talking. Okay. I've supported all these students. Okay. Okay. Zone by zone and name by name. And so anybody at all who wants to cross check can cross check. And you are funding this? Absolutely. And I'm doing more. I'm doing more. And I'm telling them. I'm telling them. I'm telling them, next year, when I'm elected into office, I will do a different thing. What I intend to do is that I will increase this support and then bond the students who will benefit from this, particularly the teacher trainees and then the nursing trainees so that they can come back to serve this constituency. Okay. And I'll but, bond them. But, but the, while this is very commendable, I should say, sure. for you to support 400 students from yes. the Common Fund. It's unprecedented. Yeah, I mean, that's... It's on March. I, <laughs> it's I, I, I it's think I think you deserve nobody, all the applause you are getting. Nobody, nobody, yes. but, nobody. But my, my no, question listen, to listen, you. Listen, let me make the point. Uh, please go ahead. I said no previous MP in this constituency has, has been, been able, able to, to do, do even one quarter. The highest that I've seen, and the records are there. I've gone to the assembly. The record that I have is 40. 40 students. Only 40 students. The okay. highest. Any, any, any previous MP who wants to challenge it, he that's can come just ten percent. Yeah, that's just ten percent. Okay. And I'm at four hundred. That's a lot. Yeah. And I think that's very commendable. But so then the, the, the question is, how sustainable is this? Is Are you going to be able to continue to support this uh, number of students from your common fund? Absolutely. I'm going to do that. Well, when I was coming, when I was coming, I rather indicated that I was going to set up a lot of constituency education support fund. Okay. That's what I, 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 I said I was going to do. But I was hoping that my party will win the presidential election. And if my party had won the pre presidential election, then the way would have been paid for me to do that. Okay. Unfortunately, MPP won. And MPP decided not to pay the people who otherwise would have contributed to this particular fund. Not if to pay I, them what? Not to pay them their deal. Because contractors, businessmen, and whatnot, okay. they are the who are going to contribute. It's not me and you. Okay. Me and you, we, are not, we don't have enough money. Okay. But I was going to appeal to contractors and then uh, business people who 
will be able to support me in this endeavor. Okay. Unfortunately, the MPP came into office, and then they, they, they decided never to pay them. And you can find out people have died out of that and all, all kinds of things. You would have heard the stories. I see. And, now, so, now, and so, as a result of that, I registered the, 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 the foundation. I've registered it. All the papers are there. I advertise it. But, you see, we need, we need to launch it, and then people will contribute to it. Okay. Now, unfortunately, because we are in a opposition, I've not been able to do it. I'm assuring you that when we come into office, I'll launch it, and then it will be uh, funded. And from that fund, we'll be able to support many more, more students. students. So okay. it becomes sustainable. All right. Like other things. Now, that's on tertiary education. Some of the gentlemen who spoke spoke about secondary education. They spoke about a girls' school which was supposed to be established. Can you speak to that? Yes. Uh, secondary education. Well, it's in the now who says that it's free senior high school. And so there's nothing that anybody can do. When teachers want to complain about senior, free senior high school, they say, no, they shouldn't complain. And so they shut them down. And even when we talk about the fact that when we come, we are going to uh, review the uh, free senior high school, they say, hey, we say that we are going to cancel it. Who is going to cancel it? John, President John Muhammad says he's going to review it. What you are running is not, is not something that is acceptable to Ghanaians. And so that's the challenge we have with senior the high school. The free SHS is not acceptable to Ghanaians. What we have, I said what we have. The way we, it is currently structured. Precisely, precisely. What would you change we, about it? We have it? to improve upon it. Look, for instance, one of the biggest problems that we have with the free senior high is poor feeding. Very poor feeding. The students are dying of hunger. And parents have to uh, force themselves to send food to their students. We, and you know why that is happening? It is because they have centralized the, 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 the procurement of, of food items. Uh, to, to the, uh, for, for, which is to be used in the senior high school in Accra. And so you have to go and then buy the food in Accra and then bring it. The headmasters and whatnot have no hand in the purchase of the food items. When we come, this thing will be decentralized and the headmaster will be able to procure them and then serve the students. Okay. But um, what I was asking was about the building of a, a girls' school. Yes, in, I'm in, coming to in, that. Okay. Well, um, but. but I, I think I think, I think I think I think you've spoke. Uh, you 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 had a, a bit of time to speak. No, so let me deal with let, let, me, let me just. It, uh, okay, 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 it's very okay. important. Okay, I I know it's important. You, you it's actually what? one of the most important you know what? things that happened for me. That, that girl so said. so just hold on. Let me go um, speak to some of our other leaders, and then I'll come to you, and then um, you can speak to the the girls' school. I think I recognize you, sir. You are an independent candidate. Please, can you pass the microphone on to him? Please introduce yourself to us. Uh, my name is Dabo Bana Joseph. Yes, sir. The independent candidate for Laura Constance. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, I know you have just joined us, but a lot of questions have been asked. And being an independent candidate, can you just speak to your people and tell them what you promise to do in terms of youth unemployment, education, and one of the biggest issues that have been complained about is sanitation particularly the provision of toilet facilities for people in the constituency? Yeah, first of all, what I want to uh, address is, I don't know how you, you people did your, I mean, the organization. I wasn't informed, I wasn't notified of any, any program of search. It was just that I asked someone what it was they, uh, they were doing. But I only saw NDC people around. And I think search programs should be pre-informed so that we all prepare ourselves to come. Well, but we, like, we, we uh, put it out, we put the information out to all the community leaders. Community leaders. So but the community right, leaders are meet, aware. Yeah, community leaders exactly. are not part, political, they are not it, part. It, it is not a platform for political leaders. It's a platform for the community. For the community. But political leaders sometimes attend so that they can respond to the concerns of the community and the constituents. Then That's we should what have it is. engaged community leaders, not political leaders. That's what I'm telling you. Yes. Community leaders were informed. Yes. Yes. So who they subsequently inform is not in Why our control. Why I'm saying this is that I was just no notified. no 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 let's let's not let let's not do that. Let's I not was do just that. notified. Yes. So so that's right that now. Is and I think you people are going to leaders. engage political parties. It's so better like you like I'm saying to give you all like I'm saying we did we do not engage political parties. Right. We engage the leaders of the community. They in turn inform the community leaders. We don't know how they do their, their circulation of that information. But we come to the community to engage with the constituents. Sometimes the political leaders okay. attend and they respond. But that's not within our control. Okay. You understand? Okay. So you see the head of the GPRTU sitting next to you. 
for example. Yes. Yes. So he's not a. Uh, I don't know him to be a, a parliamentary candidate aspirant. Okay. You understand. Okay. So please, ge gentlemen, please let's let's calm down and allow the gentleman to speak. Please let's calm down. It, let me explain something. Let, let him. Talk. No, let me explain something. You have a minute. You have a minute. Yeah, to you have a minute yes, yes. The point that he's making, it is important that I explain that. I was never also informed. I was never, never informed as a parliamentary candidate. In fact, it is people who read the information in, on, on social media who drew my attention to the fact that TV3 was coming here. Okay. And you can find out from your people. Did they ever call me? No, they, that's what I've me. explained to him, that I we don't on, call political yes. parties. So we don't call political parties. No impression should be created that yeah. we yeah. were invited and we prepared ourselves yes. to come here. Exactly. No impression should be created that way. Thank you. Okay, right. so uh, back to your question. Uh, yes, sir. In terms of youth employment, I've, I've all, yeah, in terms of employment as an indep independent candidate, I actually think for now, Laura Constituency deserves human development. Human development. Yes, when I say investing into job creation and other things, like we shouldn't just focus on infrastructure and other stuff, but rather try to also look for more jobs. This uh, creating more uh, private jobs, investing in private uh, things that will also employ the, the, the human labor. Okay. And also, I'm looking at it that uh, if my brother is, or my grandfather is explaining or expressing whatever he has done for the youth, I think I have seen nothing. I've seen nothing yet because. So what's your plan? My plan is. What's your plan? My plan is. Yes. My plan is I'm going to really focus much in lobbying for more security jobs, more uh, uh, like when I say security jobs, like fire service, prisons, these uniform jobs. I want to invest much on that thing for the youth that are unemployed. The, Graduate youth that are unemployed. I also want to. Int I intend, okay. or when I get it, not. So, so I, I, I don't think that that is the job of um, a parliamentary candidate to, to that is, that look is. for opportunities in the security services for people in the constituency. No, if if can if, you explain? Yeah, can you if, explain? If you are saying you don't think. Doesn't mean it's not possible. No, you I'm, don't think. I'm not talking about the possibility of it. So what but you don't say you is think not a job. It's the job of the, the MP. How, how, is that, how is that yes. the job of the MP how? to lobby for jobs in the security services for people in the constituency? The MP support in passing a bill to enable the finance minister to what? To really give chance for them to employ uh, 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 workers. Okay, so here's So if I'm in parliament this is the and problem. I'm aware if I'm in parliament and I'm aware they are going to employ or recruit officers, I should be the one to have the first inform first hand information. Okay. I should be the so one to the, be the able to know with your that. Plan, yes. The the problem with your plan yes. or what it looks like is that when regular people still from your constituency apply for these jobs. They might not get opportunity because you is definitely you, true that you, if you the are an leader, ordinary person would have used your influence to put your own people in this position. Nah, nah, the so that, that when regular no people plan. apply, the I beg your pardon. That he has no plan. When regular people apply, they will not get the jobs. These so, jobs are not supposed to be for people who are politically affiliated because of their political affiliation. Should I come in? Should I come in? Go on. Yeah. Yes. You see. Let's not create a picture as if it's not politically motive, uh, uh, this thing. The thing is, before you get an immigra immigration service, before you get police, fire, if you, are not in, if you are not familiar or if you don't know a politician, must have forget it. We know what is happening in our next But are you aware that community. that is a dangerous trajectory? That is not if, any dangerous. If that members is what of is parliament happening. are choosing who should be it's employed It's not about choosing who should be employed. Agencies. It's about lobbying to get the numbers for your constituency. R really? Yes. When you know if you are not, if your government is not in power or your so, government so is in power. So that means that if you are... If you are an NDC candidate, yes. then you'll be able to get jobs for NDC people. It's not about if getting you are jobs NPP for NDC person, you get jobs for NPP people. That is where you people. get it wrong. It's not about. So, yeah, you, so make it clear. I'm talking your as position. an independent candidate. Yeah. And I'm telling you that 
I'm talking as an independent candidate, not with any other party. I, 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 I am you. a new universal candidate. But when you go when to I go, parliament, when you are I going go to, align to align to one When side. I go to parliament. You will not align to any side. I'm not going to align with any side. I will lobby for jobs. I will lobby for the security services and bring them nah, to nah, my constituency. Nah, I disagree. And what, okay. you don't, what so, we don't understand. So, so what, is not no, let me so what I know let about parliament. Let me learn. Let me learn. You need to align to a side. Let me learn. Okay, go on. Let me learn. Go on. I am going to be a universal body. I will not align with any political party. But what I want you but, to understand is that. Uh, uh, is uh, this a new law you are going to create to be a universal body? Because... No, it's, it's not about music now, to me. Now, it's not okay, about music. It's all of our time. Let's dwell in important not, issues. You see, you are interjecting. Let me land. It's all not right. about new law. All right, go on. I have the right to sit alone. I have okay. the right to be an. I, I, I came here as an independent candidate. Let, please let the man talk. Talk to my producers. Yes, thank you. Yes, go ahead. You see, if you allow me to explain myself, yes, you will get what I want to say. But when you are interjecting, you will not get it clear. Okay. It's not a must for you as an independent candidate to go and align with a party. It's not a must. Is that you, so? It's your choice. Okay. Yes. And what I want you to understand is that I will be a universal body and the NDC MPP will have to come to me then I give you my, my choice of whatever I want to send to my constituency. Okay. If I tell you I want this to be sent to my constituency, if you are able to uh, uh, support in that, then I, I, I try to, when there's any voting, I try to vote towards your area. And but when you don't want to follow or do what I want, I decide to know where I think is, is best for me. Okay. All right. Yes, so that, that is your plan for youth employment. My pl no, no, no. We are. You see, okay. that is where I said we are not getting this. No okay. the point okay. is, the no youth. Plan. Can we? The please, youth can for we, now. Can we calm down, please? Please can the we calm youth, down. The youth for now, all is about jobs. Mm. We've been here for four years. We can point. We can pinpoint any job that has been sent to us. Okay. Or any job that the MP or the sitting MP has. Come with. We okay. can't pinpoint anything. Okay. We can be making the noise. Okay. I can tell you right here that I've sponsored over 500 students. I've paid uh, 500 students school fees, thousand thousand each. I see. I can tell you that. You Just you like what the MP is saying. You are saying you can't. No, no, no. I'm trying to tell you I something. Not. The MP is saying he has a list. Okay. I want to have a list. Please, please, please. I want to have a list. Okay, okay. Let me let me say he has a list. I want to have a list. If you have no evidence of what you're saying, I want to have a list. I want to have a list of students I've supported. What are you talking about? So when we sit to propagate or try to do, are you saying that? It's not about that. Are you saying that you yourself? have sponsored 500 candidates or you are speaking to what honorable uh, talk no. about he can buy fuel for his vehicle I've, I've, I've have you talking about sponsoring I've sponsored you say he cannot buy fuel for I've sponsored that please don't say that please don't say that you have sponsored students 500 I've sponsored do you have any evidence to show us you see is 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 saying I can't even get fuel I can't even get fuel to fuel my car it's rather unfortunate he said I wasn't like this before he wasn't having fuel equally. When he started politics, nah, nah, ask him. Nah, when when he respect, started politics, he was I having whatever he had now. We are dwelling okay. into realities. So if okay. he's saying that I can't even get the fuel to fuel my own car, it's and rather unfortunate. My, my question to you is, my question to you is yes. the conversation we are having on education and youth unemployment is a very important one. Now you have made a point that you have provided 500 students with school fees for tertiary education. Now I'm asking you if you have any evidence to this, or if you can mention any of the students or which schools they went to. That will help our conversation. I think if that is why we have to go by, then it's better you reorganize this program. We all come with our list of students who sponsored. And yes, you can sit and say, I sponsored 500 students. What 500 students have you sponsored? Honorable just brought his list. The mouth speaking, they, they talk. All right. I know all, I know all. It's too much. We all are right. fed up with you. We are fed up with him. It's you, better you should step down. You are fed they up talk with him. Of, uh, I've list, uh, I have list of students I've sponsored. I've done this. I've bought air condition. This is not what we are here to talk about. What are we, we here to We want him to understand that he is tired and he should step down. He is tired. He should step down. Did he's he tell you that he was tired? He's, he's my grandfather. He should step down and give the youth to move All right. on. 
um, can you please Listen pass the microphone? Listen, back to four years. All right, please, can we pass the microphone on? Um, gentlemen, please, can you take the microphone from him and then please pass the microphone on to the gentleman? All right. Um, what's happening? What's happening? No, 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 no. All right, listen, I, I want us to understand, I want us to understand something. I want us to understand something. I, I know that when we are talking about developmental issues, sometimes we all get very passionate. But this is not a political debate. We are speaking about the things that you need in this constituency. And your leaders are here, so they are answering to tell you what they can do for you or what they have already done. So when they are talking, please allow them to talk. If they say something which you don't agree with, you will have your chance and you can speak to them directly. So we will have a very balanced, informed discussion and we'll leave with solutions to our problems, okay? So, and please, so, can you so, introduce yourself so, to so, us? So now, yes, so now, when he's asked a question, he should answer the question. He should not try to add, 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 uh, indict exactly. some other person. Exactly. That's wrong. He cannot exactly. do that. Yes, if that's sir. what you want, then we are going to have no, a I think, Please, I please, think, I think, I think pay, your, pay the interjections that please. I can ask. You, you are not allowing me to learn. I had wanted you to allow what, me what, to land. Do you properly. want to add something to what you have already said? Yes, you asked me about okay, three please, questions. Please go on. You talked about sanitation. Okay, yes. So you spoke about employment and education. The employment, now, I talked about I'll the employment, come, but I'll you didn't allow sanitation. me to finish with the employment. I'm sorry, I'll come to sanitation. But please allow the gentleman to tell us who he is. He has also just come. Okay. All right. Yeah, please, can you introduce yourself to us? Very well, now, Shako. I am Abdulaziz Poyel. Constituency Communications Officer for the New Patriotic Party. You are welcome. Thank you. Now, um, I'm going to give you the same opportunity to speak to some of the issues that the youth have um, raised when they came to the microphone. Yeah. They spoke about youth unemployment, they spoke about education, and they also spoke about sanitation. I'm going to give you five minutes to speak to which of these three issues you can speak to before we come back to the microphone to talk to the people. Please go ahead. You have five minutes. All right. So um, to start with, um, let me Youth be clear on this. Okay. Um, that we appeared late on set simply because we were not properly informed as a political party who needs to be represented. Um, as we speak, my parliamentary candidate is on his way, hoping that he would be here to be part of this. All right. However, we were not that honest of being invited to be part of um, a very august program like this. But we're here to represent and state obvious what the facts are. You're yeah, welcome. Thank you. So um, in the area of um, education, um, for the past um, seven and a half years, almost eight, we've done enough for the good people of Laura, um, starting with uh, um, sponsoring students through their education, um, building educational infrastructure, and uh, also securing scholarship opportunities for Constituents of Laura. I don't want to, to cut you, but because Very you well. mentioned educational infrastructure, a gentleman came to the microphone and spoke about a girls' senior high school which was promised to be built. Can you speak to that? Very well. So, yes, um, we commenced um, the construction of the girls' senior high school in Zambo, um, which are in 2020, which currently um, is stalled for, for the fact that contractor has left site. However, as we speak, plans are far advanced and bringing contractor back to site too. When, when is he coming back to site? Very soon. I, I can't give a definite date to that, but soon as I speak, contractor will be on site to continue with um, the, the building of the girls senior high. Um, as we speak, we have furniture for that particular senior high school in the constituency. Furniture for the girls model senior high school in the Laura constituency. Yes. Wh where and, is the furniture? Well, the, the furniture is packed at the assembly stores. That's very fireable at the assembly stores. Very fireable. Okay. Yes. Um, also in the area of education, we've built a lot of um, infrastructure. If you go to Laura Senior High School, is a classical, a classical example, where we've, we've been there to build them classroom blocks. If you go there, in the Upper West region currently as we speak, Laura Senior High, upon completion of their ultra modern um, um, assembly hall complex, would be the biggest in the Upper West region. Upon the Laura Senior High School. Laura Senior High. Have you started building it? Yes. You've started at building it. At the roofing stage. Okay. At the roofing stage, we are talking yeah, about tangibles. Stage. These okay. are not intangibles as we have some of them come to mention. These are tangible product, uh, projects that we are talking about. Again, if you visit Brayford Senior High School, which is one of those senior high schools we have in Laura, um, there are from classroom blocks to dormitories to teachers' accommodation, um, administration block, all of that's crowding up in the Brayford Senior High School. Philly Gadochi. These are not things that are on paper. 
they are there on the ground. If you visit Brooklyn Senior High School as we speak, those um, blocks, as I mentioned, are currently under construction. We've also going to do a lot of um, um, construction of basic school infrastructure. If I should mention for you, just um, last two months we went to Tabiere to commission a classroom unit block for the people of Tabiere, which would serve as their GHS block. We've gone to, um, I want to believe the um, um, NDC um, constituency secretary is here, his own um, backyard, that is his electoral area because he's the assembly member there. We've gone there to hand over a, a, an ultra-modern kindergarten block to his um, people to, 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 to educate um, their, their kids coming out from that area. We have under construction um, a training and a technical vocational institute which uh, forms part of the first batch of nine that the Nana Adodanko Akufuado government started in Ghana. We have one currently under construction in Laura. On your way to Babli or what, towards what, what, what is it called? Tivets. What is the name of that? Tolibri Tivets. It is currently under construction. Currently under construction. He's here. The assembly member for the It's area. a lie. It's, it's a lie. Own it's a lie. It's own electoral It's a lie. Are we are the only one in the land. We can sit area. here. You lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. The noise making wouldn't it's stop a lie. anything, right? It's a lie. The noise that you guys make would not stop anything. So I continue. What, what level call. is it at now? Yes, if you get the um, now foundation ask him has which level done. is the project? Foundation has been done currently as we speak. We are about raising the, the, the walls of, of that. So um, it's at the ground level. Exactly. On How ground long level. has it been at the ground level for? Um, How many for years? For a while now. For a while now. It's, it's so been what has stalled it? Why has it been um, late? Construction is done in stages, in phases, right? Once a, a, a contractor completes a phase of this project, he would have to apply for release of funds to continue with the other. So he hasn't work. gotten the funds. He has yet. applied. Funds hasn't been paid to contractor. But as I speak, I can the assure you that are running contractor away, will be coming back on site to continue with that project. All right. Let's talk about youth unemployment. Yes. Um, fortunately for me, I, I work as the um, district monitoring and evaluation officer in the office of youth employment agency. I have my boss right lead there in the area of youth and employment for permanent jobs we've provided with the youths. Um, I think in the area of education, which secured teaching slots, both teaching and non-teaching slots for teachers who are in our senior high education teaching here in Laura. We have some in our basic schools imparting knowledge in our children. We have non-teaching staff supporting in our various um, 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 teaching uh, institutions here in Laura. If you get to the municipal education office, we so have a number of them in there. So you provide teaching jobs. Yes. The reason I asked you about youth unemployment is that when we activated the, the microphones earlier, yes. a lot of the young men who came spoke about unemployment issues. Exactly. They say it's a problem in their constituency. So, so while you have told me what you have done in the past, can you tell me what the plan is? Very well. Going into the future for Very the well. young people in this constituency. Very well. Um, as, as, as we speak now, Shakur, as, as we speak. They are saying you are unemployed. I am, I am very much employed with a youth employment agency. Very much employed as their monitoring and evaluation officer. Okay. Very much employed. And from so your monitoring and evaluation, exactly. what, what, what can you say to the future of the young people in this constituency that there who are is unemployed? Hope. There is hope. What, what, what ex what, and we need some tangible examples there is of hope. what you want Just to like do. we've done to them for this seven and a half years and counting that we've provided thousands of youths with jobs in Laura. Unfortunately for us, we have an abysmally performed MP who cannot talk of employment for the youths here in Laura. Um, let, me, let me take you back a little. Whilst he came to campaign, he touted himself as a chief lobbyist who is capable of getting into any office and bring employment and development to the people. As we speak, he hasn't been able to do any. And I can tell you on authority, on authority that he can't pinpoint one person that he secured employment for in his entire four years. But I can tell you for a fact that when we had a member of parliament in the person of Honorable Antonio Abe Kabo, he secured jobs for the youth in teaching, he secured jobs for the youth in the forces, and currently as I speak, I happen to be a beneficiary of him, right? As I speak, there are, there are countless of them here that I can point out to, even including NDC members seated here. Right? Nah, Their communication nah, officer nah, is a classical nah, example. Let okay? The communication officer and his DBT. They are both classical end, examples of our let employment let opportunities. Let him end. Let him end. Let yeah, yeah. end. Let him end. We they offered them employment. The, the deputy communications officer of the NDC, we provided him employment. Here right. Laura. Yes. Okay, so you're speaking to facts. So you, you've spoken to 
education and youth unemployment. Exactly. You've spoken about what you have done in the past. Exactly. I was hoping that you would speak about plans for the future. So I finish but, on that. Let me finish but, on that now. But now, you, have, you have spoken for five minutes. Ten seconds will do. No, Let me finish on that. Our plan for the future. Our plan for the future. One is to you've spoken, retire. You've for One is to retire the abysmally performed member of parliament who have a Laura. That is the, the, the first time. plan. All right, so two, I'm, I'm told two, you can have 10 two, extra seconds. Um, we know that we still have a lot of development challenges here in Laura. Our MP has failed in that regard. We are promising the people of Laura inspiring hope that once given power, look, this, this is station under construction. We started it, right? We started. And I'm telling you, we are going to complete this this facility as we as we have it well this station this premises that we are on this station we are this in, very premises that we are been in. A, there has been a complaint about the station this very premises that we let are me in. tell you what the complaint about the station well. has been since you mentioned the station the complaint is that the station is located at a place which will potentially congest the main road when the roads or the bridge that is currently or has promised to be constructed is open that the location of this station will cause congestion so this station was not well placed and that it should have been placed somewhere in the outskirts so as to take development to not, those parts not, not, what not would you case. what would you say to now that? you are coming from the greater Accra region I, I i would want you to tell maybe for those who who who, who do not explore where we have the the, the 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 major stations in greater Accra, whether they are outskirts of Accra. Where do we have them? So, yes, still. So Accra we are, is a we are, big we are region. able to do overpasses. We are talking about a constituency. We've been able, we've been able to, to, to construct all of that. I am telling you that we would have the station here in Laura that would be able to construct the bypass, right? For and those it will who not have come, any for those, for the technicians who have come to to do all of that visibility, uh, visibility studies, have it that it is possible yet still to still have a dual carriage road here in Laura with the station present. All so right. that at all is not an issue. All right. Now moving forward for what we, we would do for the people. I said earlier we would be retiring the, the abysmally performed MP, the incompetent one, um, would be retiring him come seventh December. We would have um. Um, the, the municipal chief executive, who is our parliamentary candidate, Honorable Jacob Derry, take over the mantle. He would be providing more jobs for the youth, just as he has his predecessor, um, Anthony Cabo, do. We would be building more educational infrastructure for the people. We would be empowering the women. We would be empowering the women. Currently, as we speak, we run a foundation which is geared towards women empowerment. To Delta, right. as we have it. To Delta has empowered right. over 5,000 women in Laura, and All when right. we take That's over power from the competent MP, we'll be That's doing that in many more for the good people of Laura. That's your time. All right, you. thank you. Now, um, I want to come back to you, Honorable, and then um, Mr. Stephen Fair and say, I want to come to you, but please let us, let us take three comments from here and three comments from here, and then we'll come back to our leaders. Uh, you, you want to ask a question? Okay, but, but I, w I want them to speak, and then I'll come to you. Okay. Uh, right. I'll go, I'll go. And take out I I wake up in the color. the the light. Yaturi, but Yaturba light. Oh, no, man, as you eat them poor, Mabata light. Because all right, but no, I don't want you to respond yet. I want the, the young people to talk and then I'll come to you. But just by way of explanation, he's talking about lights. He says that the MP has fixed their lights, but in his own backyard, there is no lights. If, if, if I understood correctly. All right, please. Gentlemen, you have, the, you have the floor. Three comments from here, three from here. We have one minute each. Please go ahead. Thank you. My name is Nicholas Donche. And uh, I will start by quoting one philosopher by name Zimmerhoff, who was a physician and analyst. And he said, living without committing a sin is like speaking the second language without making a mistake. In fact, we want to reset Ghana. And if people will learn their mistakes and reset themselves as we reset Ghana come 2024, it will be better for them as lies. I'm, I'll soon be giving you the Zambo uh, Girls School at stage. It, it has been ripped off. And the DC who claims he, he hates from that place comes to that place, be giving the Tendame 10,000 Ghana cities, 30 Ghana cities, while that project is lying there. 
Now, uh, there, is, there is a route to be constructed from Badi to Link Nandom. And I hosted the constructors. They, they are here, they can tell you that. They were sleeping in my house. To yesterday, they just came, Nicodemusly. Then they are coming to work on the, 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 uh, these two months. Now, Lara Senior High, I am a tutor of that place. Okay. Now, the abundant project is there. And you are standing, you are, you are he says they constructed an assembly hall. Yes. Multi purpose. It, 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 it's not true. Nothing. I, I am a tutor. I teach there. I teach there. I'm also a teacher there. I'm also a teacher there. It's a lie. I teach there. I think. Oh, oh, no, it's not, it's not your turn. It's not your turn. I teach there. I teach that, and they know, they know okay. that I teach that. All right. It is All right. abundant, All and right. the root. All right, I'll ask him to answer. Yes, Lincoln, I'll ask him to answer. Martin, to Kamba, uh, to Nandom. Ask them, the state of it. Yesterday, the contenders came to me. That they, they want to come and stay with me and work on it. These two months that you are coming to control that road to that place, they are just probable lies. And now, the girls' school, it is real. I'm giving the video to them. They'll, they'll, they'll actually play it. Okay. And you see the, the stage of it. It is real of, and nothing is being done about it. What are they telling us? What, what was your proverb in the beginning? That living without making a mistake is like when you are living without committing a sin. Because I said, when you are to learn the language, uh, the second language, then you, are, you will definitely encounter so many mistakes. Okay. So normally, analysts will base on the mistake and reset themselves as we to reset Ghana for All right. Ghanaians. Thank you, sir. Please let somebody else speak. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Please, I will speak my la uh, local language. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, Thank you. Please, barrier. Yeah, no okay. Any Boba a bonale, an independent candidate. Independent candidate. We get all the way in Pia, on a law bina. For any independent candidate, a year from a law bina. A boy is sorry for a police city near fire service. A police commander Zena Hunachan lobby bay. A IGP Zena Hunachan lobby. Our colossal youth. I bet on it. If I want to say that. I know I can't be beat up by the school that but you are a council I bet you told me you want to come by the city and you didn't live it to me I can't tell you that you doubt to me all right 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 all right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, and um, just by way of explanation, he's talking about the fact that they want development in this constituency. The development has to come into this constituency. Um, he asked about the senior high school for girls that it has not been built. And he also spoke about um, the independent candidate who says you'd lobby for security jobs in the security agency and he's asking is he going to go to the IGP to um, lobby or exactly how is he going to do it and he also says we don't want lies in the constituency we want only the truth basically just to summarize what he said yes sir yeah, hello now uh, you see these are my issues I want to target 
You see? Nah. You see, if you have a stupid human being who doesn't know the difference between the public sector and then just creating a job, you have this problem. I'm not going to accept that nonsense. No, I'm not going to accept that stupidity. I'm not going to accept nonsense here. You'll have to speak am, into the microphone. Yes, and I, I said I'm not going to accept stupidity because what? you should learn how to know where is public sector and where is just creating jobs for you on uh, uh, empowerment. You should know what the MP does and what uh, institutions also do. Okay? These are what I want. Yes. He is creating, he's creating the impression that he gave me a job to the party office or to the youth employment office. Which of them? Have you benefited from the youth employment agency? I was there before they came. They, they wasn't that. I was already there before they came. Okay. I was there. I went to Palugo and was trained. He doesn't know much about it. He's born here. He knows. Okay. So sometimes, when you are talking, devoid personal attack and go to the general issues. Okay. So you shouldn't have given audience at all. Now, my issues are, I want to know from the government in power for eight years, we want Laura development, devoid of stomach politics. If you pass here, go to the stadium. It's along the Babylon Road. We will send you. You are here as a media man. Check whether it's an astro death or it's a shep pen. Eh? It's a pen for goats to stay. Eh? Okay? And then they use a, a whole stadium. They want to destroy it for that particular shep pen and call astro death. Is that how development will be done? Okay. Two, I want to find out from the MCE because they will soon leave power. I monitor two are not there. If they leave power, who are Which we? Which machines? The drip, the drip, the machine. Drip. Yes. We don't have the uh, P loader and then the one with the metal chain, the greater hook. You said two of them are missing. Yes, they are not there. We don't know they are where they are. I and see. that is what they call development. Okay. That is for central government, is a development. Okay. Let, let, let's come here now. now let's I'm come here finished. now. I You're not done. You're not done. You're not done. Yes. Okay, please, please hurry it up for us so we can go to the side. Yes. The, the projects, they commission a project. In, gen, in uh, ma, March. Which project? The Kasari Road project. They can't short for that. The contractor mounted things there. We are going to election. Eight months, uh, almost ten months. We don't know the contractor. We don't. We have not seen anything there. So what is the state at which we are? And they are calling them the development oriented people. Are we deceiving ourselves or what? All right. The last one. Did you pass the Babylon Road? When you were going, did you pass the Babylon yes. Road? From what to Babylon? Yes. Does that, does that road even fall under any of the villages road in Accra? That is municipal, Laura Municipal, the oldest district. Does that, does that road be fit to be in even Accra? Now, let us be frank. Eight years. And you say stay with to give you the chance. We are not even talking about that. Talk about what you do. You can't talk. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, please, my name is Martin Wayi. Uh, I think my issue has to do with um, littering in the constituency. Okay. I think TV3 should bear a witness. This is a car park. All right. When you come around, have you actually seen any dustbin around? It is not. Who shows that littering is an issue in a lot of constituency? So, under normal circumstances, we should have been seeing dustbin all around for people to drop their waste inside. Now, I want to now go back and talk about the issue of the MPP, the, the developmental issue they are raising. I think I want to appeal to TV3 that at least next time when you have this program, try to allocate time for yourself so that some of the issues, you can go there with your cameras to actually attest to the fact that what they are saying actually happened on the ground. Because on the issue of the Zamo girls they spoke, I mean they spoke about, it is nothing to write home about. I have videos, I have videos of that project. The project there is collapsing. They will have taken off the roofing seat, it's collapsing. The Tibet project they talk about at Babylon is at the foundation level. They haven't done anything about it. So this shows that they are here lying, lying to their what questions. So all I want to say is that, yes, for honorable beat, the man, we are going to retain him because these are, yes, we are going to retain him. One, because when it comes to development, we have never seen his type because he has touched every aspect Speaking of... Speaking to the microphone. Yes, he has touched every aspect of our human development. He made mention of it. What is about education? He spoke about it. What is about health? He has made a lot of donations to the municipal uh, hospital. It is on record. We are not speaking. Honorable is not speaking all of that. He has evidence, supporting document to what he's saying. 
So to counter what the independent candidate was saying, because I have issue with that. If you think you have equally done something for the people, please tell us what you have done for us. Don't try to counter what he has said. All right. So in all, what I want to know is that, please, we, in appreciation, goes to our honorable. Please, he's, in fact, all right. we have never seen his time. And we are going to retain him. Count 20. All right, that's your time. That's your time. Please let somebody else speak. Yes, sir. Microphone is not open. Thank you very much. I am Nuh Abdurrahman Jimba. I'm actually originally from Wa Central. I'm not a constituent. I don't vote here. But I've been working here since 2016. Um, there is one thing I just observed. And I'm speaking to the MP. I wish the MCU was also here. The Laura fire tender at the moment is a white elephant. The fire tender. The fire tender. I don't know whether it's very sweet to become a Gen black gentleman, elephant. Gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. Please, please, please. We need to keep quiet so that we hear what they are talking about. They are speaking on all of your behalfs, okay? So please, let's keep quiet so we can hear them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. sir. What I was saying is this, that the Laura Fire Tender, Municipal Assembly Tender, the tender that's supposed to put up fire, is currently a white elephant. Just because of a simple charger. There's a charger. device in a machine called a charger. That is dysfunctional. And so at the moment, Laura, when we have fire issues, we can't attend to them. Are you, are you a fireman? Sorry. No, I am a teacher, actually. Okay. I'm a, a teacher by profession. But that is what I know. The tender is there. It's packed up facing opposite. It can't move because of a fire. Uh, what is it? A charger. A charger. So I'm just appealing to the MP. The MC, if you are here, at least these are basic things we need. Okay. If they can speak to the Minister of Interior. It is, it is not acceptable that somebody's house, a uh, fire service, I mean, a filling station can get burnt because there is just no fire tender and it's because of a simple device called a charger. It is unacceptable in the 21st century. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. One last person and then I'll come to you, sir. Yeah. One last person, yes. My name is Manta Kwenye. I want to ask our honorable MP sitting here. He says he has done a lot of work. I did not see it. What Tony have done here? Project, development, we have it here. We don't want lies. If you do good, we vote for you. If you do bad, we will not vote for you. That's okay. My own. Thank you, sir. Now, um, it's, uh, okay, you spoke. Um, Mr. Steven, can do you want to? Sorry? Yes. Please, uh, as a community leader, can you speak to any of the things that have been said and then I'll, I'll come back to you, Honorable. I'll come to you, and then I'll come back to you. It's on, it's on. All right, it's on now. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Hi. Please, can we have some quiet? Those who were not here, I introduced myself as a community and an opinion leader. You can call me what? But I'm a community leader. Please, 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 those behind, listen to something. All right, please let's be quiet. Please let's be quiet, please. I want to start by giving you some historical antecedents. My other name in Laura here is Mugabe. I have been in the assembly for 30 years. 30. 30, that's somebody's age here. Before I fell out in 2019. I want to start by saying that Laura, Laura, as we sit down, please listen. Laura, as we sit down here, was created as a district in 1908. Do we remember that? 1908. After Gambaga, the first district in the Northern Territories was created in 1902. So Laura is the second district in the Northern Territories. But this is where we are today. This is where we are, we are today, arguing over development. Please, 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 let me have some quiet here. Hello. Please let me let's have be quiet. some quiet there. Please, please, let's, what is the problem? Please, Victor, let's be quiet. Victor, please. Now, after two, 
after Laura was created. In 1954, 1952, Laura was designated. Please, let's be quiet, please. In Please, 1954, Laura was designated as a statutory planning area, similar to what you have in Tema. Similar to what you have in Tema. That's why they have communities. If you look, now if you get up and look at the houses in front here, they are all in rows. In rows. No disconnection. New town, this, a new Zinko Noir, the same thing. Laura degenerated into haphazard planning when we failed to hold on to the statutory planning document. Where we sit today, there were businesses around here. When we, where we sit today, there were businesses around here. Today is a lorry park. We built as an assembly a lorry park at Furo. They said the drivers, the drivers or the transport union said it was too far. That was supposed to open up the district. I agree. That place has now been cut. That place has now been redesignated as a chips compound for the people of Furo and the surrounding areas. We again, we again acquired a land just some hundred meters away from here on the Nandon Road to build a lorry park, which was closer here. Which was closer here. The landowners rejected it. That is why the lorry park is here. That is why we have a lorry park in a congested area. We are not thinking about expansion. Now, let me not forget to show appreciation to Johnny Hughes. Because any day I don't listen to him, I have headache. I don't eat. My ex extend my, my appreciation to him. But let me continue. The only problem I have for now, the problem I have now, now is about the development of our road from Kumasi to Hamlet. And why I have that, develop, why I have that challenge and that problem is that we have had year of roads, one. Second year of roads, two. Third year of roads, three. What crime has the Upper West, the Laura, and East Everest caused to have been to have been treated in this manner with this bad road that you came on? That you came on. Is it fair? Is it fair? Yes, but we have but we have had we have had we have had we have had a deputy minister for roads before. So thereafter, what have we what have we done? What have we done? Please, MPP government, show signs that you want to do the roads for us, and we we'll appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, all right. Um, I, I think I can come to you, um, Honourable. Would you like to speak now? Or you you want okay? You want your chairman to speak? Please give him the microphone. Please give him the microphone. All right. A lot has been said. Um, I, I beg your pardon. Would you like to respond to any of the issues that were raised? No, him. Uh, would you no. like to? Would you like yes, to I, respond I to any of the issues issue that have been raised? I want raised? to talk about. Okay. I think I just want to mention that, but for the presence of Honourable Lawyer Bid and what has been said, this our Laura Hospital will have been closed down. How is that? All the facilities there. You take the mortuary. He has spent millions of cities to work on the mortuary for it to function now. If you look at the cold room where we store our very vital uh, medicines, he had to work on it and provided air conditions for the, for the cold room to be able to store medicine. All these things, we have government in place. X-ray machine was down. People had to move from here to where. I believe you came from where you saw the distance to go and take common X-ray. And all this, we have development agents representing uh, Nana Kubado in the constituency. We think that what he has done, he has done enough for the people of Laura, and you can all testify to it. That is why when you were coming, you saw that the MPP, they, they, they were not willing. They saw that the whole show, they have nothing to say here. 
They are just here to disrupt our our our, our, this, our program. So I'm saying okay. that our honourable MP. I'm glad you mentioned the hospital because you heard a gentleman talk about the hospital. He says that they cannot afford health care and that the hospitals are empty. So when people are sick, they stay at home because they can't afford to pay their hospital bills. Are you aware of this? Yes, it's also a challenge. You are aware of the cost of living. People are struggling to even feed, to talk of going to the hospital. To Now health insurance has no value. You can testify to it. Health insurance can only pay for the bed. Please, let, let's all sit Sometimes down. Sometimes it's only for bed charges. Let's all sit down. Please, let's sit down. There are empty chairs. Please, excuse me, gentlemen, gentlemen. There, there are seats. Please sit down. Okay, please, please sit down. Please sit down. There, there are seats. Please sit down. Thank you. Now, please they, sit now, down. Okay, there's a, an now, empty seat. Thank the you. The MPP have done nothing in Lora constituency. This shouting and making of noise will not get them anywhere. They have made nothing. They have disappointed us, and we are going to vote them out. Come December 7th, we are going to vote MPP out. Even the elephant had no business being roaming around in the, in the, in the house this year. Right. We are going to vote them out. They have right. nothing to show. They should bring their records. Our records are here. They should right. also provide their records All right. so that we compare. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it's All right. We have only 10 minutes to wrap up. We have only 10 minutes left. So please, let's keep quiet so we can listen. If you have any questions, you can ask. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, nah. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello? Go ahead, sir. We can hear you. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. As for, as for what I have done, as for what I have done for my four years, it is not an illness about the internal system. It is something that you can see with your eyes. And I have never shared away from stating them whenever the opportunity comes. Three days ago, at the Laura Corbinet Festival, I read a statement on what I have done for Laura constituency. I read. Nobody read any statement like that. Nobody. Absolutely nobody. In fact, when the original minister wanted to rebut Martin, he had nothing to say. Please, 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 you have to respect your elders. Who are you? Who are you? Are you the one moderating this thing? Will you clear off? Are you the one moderating this thing? I'll stop him. I'll stop him. I will stop him. Please go ahead and talk about what you're saying. Please wait your turn. Wait your turn. Wait. Wait. Wait for your turn. Go and bring your, your municipal chief executive to come and debate me. Please, please complete the statement you were making earlier. Anyway. No, no, please, I know, com I know. please complete but your statement. Your All right. We have, we, we, please, ha we have only please. nine minutes more. Please, please sit down. Please. Sit down. Please, please, please. Let, what I'm saying? Let, 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 right. let them be. If you, if you don't sit down, we'll just close and go. Please, please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Hello. 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 What's happening? Please sit down. Hello. If you don't sit down, we'll just close and go. Please sit down. Please, please, please. Sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. If you don't sit down, we'll end and go. Please sit down. 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 Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? No, I'm going this way, so I'll come this way. No, let them finish. I'll come to you. Don't worry. I'll come to you. Please sit. Okay, we are waiting for you to sit down so we can continue. Yes, they, they should please sit down. Sit. Please sit down. Sit down. Please. Sit down. Sit down. Yes, so let's sit down so we can continue. Please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Gentlemen, sit down.
Everybody. And so they have come to me with the second request for the repair of the tender. That this was, the municipal assembly, assembly is sitting there. What are they doing? They collect our levies, they collect our taxes. What do they do with that? Now, the hospital, the hospital, the hospital ambulance is broken down. They have come to the MP again. Then the MP should come and repair. Meanwhile, government is sitting here. What is the government doing? They can't repair. They have an ambulance service. They can't repair the ambulance. What are they talking about? What are they talking about? Such, such, such an ineffective and incompetent government, and you are comparing that with an MP. The MP is supposed to implement government programs. What are you talking about? You don't know what you are talking about. The MP's core business is to make laws in parliament. The MP's core business is to make laws in parliament. And that's what everybody ought to know. And not to come here and then talk about things that government is supposed to do and government has failed to do. Listen, listen. Do you know why the, 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 the debate bring has not been constructed? Because the MP, whose core business is to make laws, came and said that he was going to construct the debate, the debate bridge. Has he constructed it? Has he constructed it? Even Nana Akubwado came and cut the sword. Has he constructed it? Nana Akubwado is leaving office. Is that the debate bridge? Is he not lying there? What are you talking about? We are talking about what I've been able to do, not what people have promised to do. I am okay. telling that what I've been able to do, I can point this, those things out to you. Okay. Be before, okay. before I leave you, sir, we know that... The MP is not directly responsible for some of these projects. Yes. But we know that you have the power to lobby for development Precisely. to come to your constituency. Precisely. Now, let's talk about the main road. Let me let, they let, have mentioned it so many I times. Will talk, I will talk about all that. Have you lobby, been able to lobby, lobby for the construction I've of that road? I've lobbied for 14 boreholes to be drilled in this constituency. Okay. Brand new boreholes. Okay. Listen, I, 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 was not in, I was not an MP. I was not in government. But NDC was in government. I lobbied for this road from Laura to Dungwini to Heng to be tied. And it was awarded to be tied. When we lost the 2016 elections, my, 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 my what do you call it? Honorable uh, Anthony Cabo, he was elected and he went to office. He was made deputy minister for roads. He went and terminated that political contract. He terminated, he terminated it. it. It's on record, 2018. He terminated it. For, for what reason? He terminated it. Listen, listen. He terminated it. He said that, listen. Oh, the records are there. I brought the records all the time. Listen, listen, listen. Please, he please, terminated please. it. I'm saying it. I'm on national television. I'm on national television. Then, when I was elected into office as MP, I went and lobbied the Minister for Roads and Highways, Honorable Kwesi Amwakwata, and the road, the contract has been reawarded, and they are working on it. So it's currently being worked on? Yes, it's being worked on. All right. All listen. Right, sir. All right, sir. Listen, listen. Please conclude. For the me. road that they are complaining about. That yes. road was constructed by John Roman Mahama. Okay. The road from Wa through Nadoli, through Laura to Nandom was constructed by John Roman Mahama. Listen. Listen. All, 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 that, all that the MPP government is to do is to maintain the road. They have failed to maintain the road and they are complaining. All right. All right, sir. Um, please, please let me come. Uh, excuse me. Please let him speak and then I'll come to you, okay? You have the final word. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, I think uh, that, that's your time. No, that, that's that's your time. 
No, 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 that's your time. That's your time, sir, please. That's your time, please. That's your time. You should have responded to it when you had the time, please, sir. Please. Please go ahead. Yes, I think, I think, I think, I still want to stress, I still want to stress this point that actually your organization is poor. Why because do you say that? I want to stress on that because your Why organization do you say that? is poor. Why am I saying Yeah, you using we your time, run. by the way. No, you have five it, minutes. Yes, okay. I would rather want to address this than saying anything. Because this thing is an NDC plan organ uh, program. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. I will not allow you to say that. I will not allow you to say that. It is not. It is not. You, you cannot tell me. It is not. It is not. And if you feel that way, you can hand the microphone to someone who wants to talk about the issues, please. We, we don't have much time. We are, we are spending extra time so you can speak to the issues. So if you don't want to speak to the issues, you may please give the microphone to someone who wants to speak to the issues. Please. Please. Oh, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. You see, why I'm, I kept saying this is... I, I don't want you to explain it. What you have said is not correct. Questions have been asked about matters in this constituency that you have to speak to. You are speaking about excesses about organization. Why don't you speak to the issues that your people have asked you? That's the time we have given you to speak to the issues. So please speak to the issues. And if you don't want to speak to the issues, Hello. please hand the microphone to the gentleman so he can speak to the issues. Please. Hello. Respectfully, please. Hello. You see... Uh, I think a brother made mention of uh, my cap uh, cap capacity as an in independent candidate, what I can bring forth to my people. Uh, I think currently as we speak, we have an, uh, a, a certain independent parliamentary candidate who is the second deputy speaker of parliament. You see, one thing people don't understand is the powers of an independent candidate. Uh, an independent candidate. I would rather want to address that in my uh, dialect to that uh, gentleman. And you hear us about a founder independent candidate, Natera. A born in Wulni Yel Blekan. An independent candidate. In and there, in and there, is it this why so when I say independent candidate, in and there, independent, independent candidate, in and there, all of us have a chance to be MP. All of us have a NDC, a party's council, and all of us have a chance to be MP. All of us have a chance to be MP. And let Stop, stop interjecting. Let me, let me learn. You know, we cannot hear them because they are not okay. using a microphone. We can hear so, you. So, are you letting me hear that? As an independent candidate, in terms of founding, and that's what's up. Both any other parties and an award as a government, I have a power to, pro, to, 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 to play there. I have power to play, to bring, back, uh, bring development to my people down here. Why? Because how? My point is, who are the uh, independent candidate? The, uh, a ruling government, uh, baby, uh, not need enough for support. Uh, operation may not need enough for support. How? I want to now come with the how. The how is that. As an independent candidate, who better get party than who be or Ziza Huna Ziza Huna Yaka Maluna wanna who tells you a who tells you a tewa benefuna fight report. Who be fight rep support rep party, Kapati, a Kaba de Bonga Jenica, Kauka, a bonda who benefits a full constituency, who can support to work. Tell who Yaka bona support or benefit your constituency for a fight Naku and when Kabonga. Tell who what in Yaka we independent candidate. NDC them long be yeleka to support yelena kuwa because we are uh, we are fighting it as a party. Tinyeka bombe support them my constituency. I will stand aside and say I will support it because it's not a party sponsored candidate. I'm not a party sponsored candidate. And back to back you to two minutes back more. to the fire service the you fire service issue. More. I think I'm an independent candidate, but we had we had a fire service uh, office in Babli. That is one of the strong, the strong uh, 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 zone for NDC. As yet, the fire service office got ripped off by rain. Rain. They lobbied through the MP. He couldn't come to support. As an independent candidate, I worked on that place. 
as an independent candidate, you have every right. I worked on that place. So when we went to talk of things that we've done, if I had known that we were coming here for this program, I would have come with a list of programs or a list of support I've given to people. We ch talk is cheap. We can sit here and talk. I've supported 1,000 people. I've supported 100 people. I have supported people that I, they know very well. And some are even here. They can pinpoint that we've supported them to get fire service. We've supported them to get police up, uh, service. Ask him as a sitting MP whether he can pinpoint one person, All one right. person that he has supported All right, you have to be in the uniform office. You, you when, have we one sit, when we sit and you are saying you bought fire service, when we sit and you say you bought air conditioning for a cold room, you bought air conditioning for a cold room, two air conditioning for a cold room, and that is always a news. You think you've done enough. You've done nothing. All right, you've that's done your time. nothing. Give that's it, it 20,000 to fire that's service to do whatever. How much is 20,000 that we have to we keep, we keep talking about it? Okay, all right. That's your time. That's your time. Please give it to me. Thank you. All right. You also have five minutes, sir. You have five minutes, sir. That's your five Thank minutes. You yeah, much. you have five minutes. And then we end. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lou. Um, I think I would want to first start off. I, hello. Now am I on? Am I on? No, 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 no. Excuse me. Please, 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 you have the final one. Very well. So I would want to start off by first dispelling some of the, some of the, 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 the misconceptions. Sit down, sit down. Right. Sit down, sit down. I, I would want to first of all dispel some of the misconceptions well, he hasn't said anything. created he hasn't by the MP here. The member of parliament yet. here in his statement. What? You had your said, chance. He created a platform. No, no, I've given and everybody a equal chance to speak. For the I municipal have given you equal chance to speak. I've given you equal them to speak. having access to water. Everyone has that had their time. That is a You had your chance. Now I want that chance. your Please viewership should be Please made aware. Here is the document now. Here is the document. Okay. That in what, 2019, what that in 2019, you can fact check item what, what 11 document of the document. This is, this, these are projects undertaken by the Nana Adudan Kwakufuando administration. These are records from the municipal assembly. And they are verifiable. Item 11 on this. Item 11 on this. Captures, captures a drilling and mechanization of a bohun for the Lord of Fire Station. So which other one is the MP referring to? What access of water did he enable the, the, the municipal fire station to get? We drilled and mechanized a bohun for the Lord of Fire Station. So what is it that the MP is here talking about? What is it? Are you this document about the contains about 600 projects executed here in Laura. It is verifiable from the municipal assembly. From and the you are saying assembly. the borehole project is on your list? Yes. A mechanized borehole drilled for the Laura Fire Station. There are fire officers who can attest to that fact. We renovated the fire station. What is he talking about? What is that he's talking about? Which aspect of the fire station did you renovate? The entire structure of the fire station. We renovated the entire structure of the fire station. You know about and the built, fire tender you're built talking about. a new fire station in Babylon. That is what we did. Okay. And built but, but a new fire station in Babylon. The gentleman who spoke spoke about the fire tender yes. and the charger which was spoiled. Are you aware of this? Very much aware. And, and what are you doing to help Very much resolve the problem? It is, it is a known fact that the MP here made mention of um, using, using common funds and releasing funds for projects to be undertaken, right? He's been, he's been written to, to come to the aid of the fire service. He's been written to. Let it be known here that during the 2020 campaign rounds, he made a statement captured on tape that all his predecessors are follow follow MPs. He's a chief lobbyist. And when voted for, he would be able to change the fortunes of Laura. Is that, is that, is that why you are here? Is that why you are here? Is that why you are here? Today, he's here telling to the faces of the people that he is in the development agent. Did he come to rob the people? Is that why you are here? Did he come to rob them? Is that why you are here? Are you a candidate? He made mention of those statements. To be a chief lobbyist and one who could who could change the face of Laura. Today, he's here giving excuses. We wouldn't take those excuses. You see, there is this there is this statement in our local parlance that when you chase the bereaved and do not get the brief, wait for him where the cops stage, he will definitely come. Four years he thought was far away from, 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 from Rachel. We are here, he will be voted out. Also, let me make it clear. All of what he said about 
giving out money for this and that and that. He complains bitterly of government not releasing his strength of the common fund. Where is he getting all those monies that he's talking about using monies and, and doing all of that? That is from the, his, his portion of the common fund given to him by government. We are constructing what, what he's known for. What he's known for is to repair. And I can tell you, the document contains us drilling 175 boreholes in seven in, in just um, um, four, four years. 175 boreholes. He's here talking about the paltry 14 boreholes that he got to lobby for. Mediocrity is what he, he said here to, 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 to tout as development. Mediocrity. That isn't what the people want. All right, now let, let's focus. Again, let let's, me, let's let me focus on, on your plan. Let me, let me, let's let me focus on, on your plan. Now yes. let me wrap up on this. Go on. Yes. It should be made known. Don't, it, don't, it should be made don't, known. Don't address the member of parliament. I am not addressing him. Yes. Yes. Focus it, on your plan. It should plans. be made known yes. that this is a crucial election for the people of Laura. Okay. The people of Laura are ready to upgrade. We are not ready to maintain someone who, who knows nothing about the development of Laura. We are not ready to keep somebody who is retrogressing Laura's developmental agenda. And come 7th December, the people of Laura are going to vote massively and vote him out of office. All right. Um... That's our time. That's our time. That's our time uh, today on Community Manifesto here in the Laura constituency. Um, obviously, it would have been great if we had more time because there's so much more to be said and so many questions to be answered. However, that's our time today. I would like to say a very big thank you to all the constituents, people of this community. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming and for speaking to your leaders. And also thank you to all the community leaders, honorable member of parliament. Thank you so much for coming and all the community leaders thank you so much for coming we are going to bulga next we're going to the bulga constituency next this has been community manifesto on tv3 new day thank you so much <laughs>